Because there's a bigger picture yes. to the story of Joseph. Yes. Now, the Holy Spirit, literally, while the song was going on, spoke to me. You have to look at it like you're looking through binoculars. Yeah. You can't look at it through one lens of binoculars in order to see, you know, far away. Yeah. But you look through both lenses, you'll be able to see far distance. Yeah. And with the Bible, with the story of Joseph in particular, you have to look through different lenses in order to see the bigger picture Amen. through the story of Joseph. That's right. So let's go ahead and journey through the story of Joseph. Then we're going to jump into why I chose the topic. God placed me here for a reason. Yeah. So we all know the story of Joseph. Joseph was 17 years old. Yeah. He was young. He was energetic. And God gave him the gift of interpreting dreams. Now, Jacob, he loved his son, Joseph. Yes, sir. I mean, he had multiple brothers, but he just really gravitated and loved Joseph, okay? He gave him a beautiful robe, and his brothers, they were jealous. Yeah. And they just had a little hatred in their heart for their brothers. Yeah. For their brother. So, fast forward, they put their brother in a pit. Uh -huh. They did dirt and put him in a pit. And then after that, they sold their brother into slavery. Mm -hmm. They sold him into slavery. Now he was up under Pharaoh, okay? He was under a new king that was in Egypt, okay? So the Lord, even though his brothers did him dirty, yeah. the Lord was still with Joseph. As yeah. the scripture says, the Lord yeah. was always with Joseph. Right. So the Lord was with Joseph, okay? And Joseph was very talented. Since the Lord is with you, my brothers and sisters, you will always be successful. Yeah. And Joseph was successful in the house of Pharaoh, okay? So since he was successful, now the Bible said that Joseph was handsome in form and he was handsome in appearance, okay? Y'all right. know his wife, Pharaoh's wife, wanted to holler at Joseph, okay? Yeah. She wanted to sleep with Joseph, okay? Yeah. All right? Pretty good. Pretty good. But Joseph stood up and said, I cannot do this. Yes. I cannot do wickedness toward this sin, towards God, and also my master Pharaoh. So, lady, I can't sleep with you, okay? <laughs> but the Bible says daily she kept on going. She's going to say, you know what, you need to lie with me and, you know, just sleep with me, okay? But Joseph kept on refusing, and then she going to lie on Joseph. Yeah. So after he lied on Joseph, Joseph got, I mean, Pharaoh got upset with Joseph, and now Joseph is put in prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, this might have been a dark moment for Joseph. Uh -huh. Could Joseph, at 17, was put in a pit, he was put into slavery, and he dis and then once he got put into prison again, yeah. he probably said, God, why is this happening to me? Yeah. Yeah. So he right now is at his lowest point. And yeah. in our lives, can we be just like Joseph? Yeah. God, I'm going through a lot right now. Yeah. Why am I going through this situation right now? Yeah. Why am if people in my family may have passed away? I'm grieving right now, Father. Yeah. Father, my, I can't I don't have enough money to pay my bills, Father. Yeah. Father, my friends are turning their backs on me, Father. Father, I need help in my life. People are yeah. backstabbing me, Father, lying on me, Father. Yeah. Why are you putting me? A small person through this huge situation. Yes. My brothers, I got the answer for you. Right. It's for a reason. Yes. It's for a reason. Yes. So let's keep on going. So Joseph put in the prison. So now there are multiple people in the prison with Joseph. You have the chief butler, and also you have the chief baker. Now Joe, now the Lord was always with Joseph. Now Joseph still had the gift of interpreting dream. Now when God gives us some side note, when God gives you a gift. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Right. I mean, you just got to use the gift God give you, okay? Right. So God, so Pharaoh, I mean, I'm sorry, Joseph still used the gift that God gave him to interpret dreams. Yeah. Now, he interpreted the two, the two dreams for the chief baker, and I mean, the chief butler and also the chief baker. Yeah. Now, let, I'm just going to sum up everything for y'all, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're dealing with the chief butler, he, Joseph interpreted his dream, then after that, he was going to go back into the house with Pharaoh. Okay. Now, with the chief baker, on the other hand, it was not really good at all. Okay. In other words, Joe told him, you're going to get hung and you're just going to die. That was, that was what he told him. Yeah. And then, after all that, it came to pass. Mm -hmm. And Joe told him, hey, when you see Pharaoh, tell him, don't forget about me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about what I, uh, the dream I interpreted for you. So, as we fast forward, okay. The chief butler tells Pharaoh about Joseph. Hey, there's a man that can interpret dreams. Because Pharaoh was having dreams that Pharaoh, nobody could interpret those dreams. Mm -hmm. So then Pharaoh calls Joseph out of prison and he said, Hey, 
Can you interpret this dream for me? Now, if you don't give me an answer, you probably gonna end up dead, okay? So just go ahead and give me that answer, okay? So Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. Pharaoh had two dreams, okay? But they were two dreams in one, okay? So it was a dream about famine that was gonna take place. So it was 14 cows, and all, it was seven good years, and also going to be seven bad years, okay? Seven good years was the land of Egypt and everyone was going to flourish. And also seven bad years was going to be famine and possibly a lot of people could die, okay? Yeah. So then, after that, Pharaoh said, well, I'm, I mean, you tell me, now you tell me this is a famine coming. How can we prevent this famine, okay? Then, so, Joseph gave him the game plan, how we can, you know, save up, you know, produce and how we can do this so we can get through this famine. So now, as we keep on fast forward, this is where Pharaoh put um, Joseph as the governor over the land of Egypt. So he was a second under Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, that was a very powerful position. Yes. Okay? Amen. So now, as time flies by, okay? So we about to, we are in the second year of the family, okay? That's taking place. So now, Joseph brothers come and they were trying to get them some crop and everything, trying to get them so they'll survive during the famine, okay? So they finally meet Joseph, but they don't know that it's their brother Joseph at all. You gotta understand, yeah. they put him in the pit when he was 17, time passes by, Joseph is 37 when he's the governor over Egypt. 20 years passes by and Joseph never seen his family yeah. since then, okay? So now, he finally meets him, and Joseph is still holding that grudge with his family. He's still holding that grudge. Now, he got a little pity with him, too. He got a little pity with him. Okay. <laughs> he did. He got very pity with him. Okay. So, now, they, so he was very angry with his brothers. So, then he tell his brothers, hey, uh, let me know more about you, okay? He said, who am I? Is your father still living? Who is your father? So they tell him what his father is, you know, their father still living in Jacob. Then they say, oh, and also we have a little brother. He said, hmm, you really have a little brother? Tell me about your little brother. What's his name in? They said, well, his name is Benjamin. Yes. Okay, yes. and we love him. And we can't lose uh, this brother right here. Because our father, we lose this brother right here. Our father's going to lose his gray hair and he's going to die. Mm. Because he's going to grieve because he don't want to lose another son. Yes. Yeah. So then Joseph will tell him, you know what? I'm going to put one of y'all in the prison and go and get your brother and bring him to me. So they put Simeon into prison. And then after that, they journeyed back to their father. They got Benjamin. Now, Jacob did not want to send Benjamin to Egypt. He didn't want to do that at all because Jacob was afraid that he was going to lose Benjamin. Mm -hmm. He was afraid he was going to lose him. Amen. Okay, because he already agreed about Joseph. He didn't want to agree about Benjamin as well. But they convinced him, and they went ahead and uh, grabbed Benjamin, and he went. So now, they finally meet Joseph again, okay? So now, uh, they return the money that they thought they stole. That was in a set clock. They just thought they stole. They returned it to Joseph, okay? So Joseph devised a plan to put a silver or gold, I think it was silver, if I'm not mistaken, a silver cup up in the sackcloth and put in Benjamin's bag, okay? So he put that up in there. So they about to get ready to journey back um, to Canaan. And then the guard stopped them. And he said, wait a minute, somebody stole from the house. <laughs> now Joseph is being somebody's a thief. <laughs> so they, you know, they went through, they investigated. They said, this is Benjamin stole from us. So then they looked, they said, wait a minute, hold on. Don't take him, please don't. Judah pleaded for Benjamin. He said, don't take him, please don't take him. Because if you take him, then our father is going to grieve and he just probably end up dying, okay? That's how we get to the focus scripture, my brothers and my sister. So Joseph couldn't take it anymore because he saw that they brought, his brother felt so bad what they did to him yeah. that they didn't want to do the same thing to their little brother, Benjamin. Yeah. So Joseph couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't, re he couldn't, restrain, he couldn't restrain himself anymore. <coughs> then after that... <coughs> My brothers and my sisters, he told his brothers, I am Joseph. Yeah. He told everybody to get out. He said, just get out let me meet with my own brothers, okay? He told them, I am Joseph. Now, the Bible said they were dismayed. Yes, sir. I don't think it clicked with them just yet yes, sir. that it was Joseph. Uh -huh. I think they were thinking, what? Hold on. The dream that he had when he was 17, could they bowing down to him? Yes. 
It came to pass. Yeah. Right. It came straight to pass. So they probably just made my goodness, my brother, we sold into slavery. Not even God. <laughs> and we serving him. Yes. Yeah. So he told, so Joseph told him again, I am your brother, yes. Joseph. Yes. Well, speculation could say that he be probably 20 years past, but he did look a little different. Yeah. Uh -huh. So then maybe that came into play, but I think they were just shocked that he was the uh -huh. governor. <laughs> so that's my honest opinion. Yes. Okay. But he had to let them know, and this is where this sermon topic comes from. And I'm glad that glad God gave him this topic. Because he told them, stop your crying. Mm. He told them, stop grieving. For you thinking, actually, y'all you, did put me in this pit now when I was 17. But you got to understand that God allowed you to do dirty to me. Yes. God allowed you to put me up in this pit. God allowed you to be, for you to be angry with me. God allowed these things because there is someone that is coming in the future who John the Baptist said, who sounded, oh, I cannot fit. Yes. Yes. There's someone that is coming. Because you got to understand, my brother, it says in the text. He said, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. Yes. You got to understand, there was a famine in the land. Yes. Okay? And if, jo if God did not play Joseph as the governor, you would not have the Israelites. Yeah. 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 And if you don't have the Israelites, you don't have King David. Uh -huh. And if you don't have King David, you don't have King Solomon. Yeah. And you go down the line, you don't have Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So he tells, so he tells them that God sent me for you to preserve life. He said, for these two years the famine had been in the land, and there are still five years where there will be not a plowing nor a harvesting. Yes, sir. And then he said, and God sent me before you to preserve a posterity. Yes, and you know what I mean, a posterity is a future generation. Yes. Yes. He said, God sent me here to preserve yes, a generation. Pretty good. Yes. Pretty good. So in your life, my brothers and sisters, you might be in situations yes. where it seems bad. Yes. You might be in situations where it humbles you. Yes. You might be in situations where it seems God is silent. Yes. You might be in situations where you feel alone, but God will put you in situations to test your faith. Yes. He will put you in situations to be obedient. Yes. He will put you in situations to humble you. Yes. He will put you in situations to know that God is in control. Yes. He will put you in situations to trust him with all your heart, with yes. all your soul, and with all your mind. Yes. So he told his brother, stop all your crying, mm -hmm. wipe the tear from your eyes, yes, because it was not you who put me here, but it was God who put me here, because there is someone that is coming who's going to heal the sick and who's going to raise the dead. Yes. There is someone who is coming who's going to open the eyes of the blind. There is someone that is coming who won't raise a person named Lazarus from the dead. There is someone who is coming who won't feed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. There is someone who is coming who John the Baptist said, I cannot fit his sandwich. There is someone who is coming and y'all don't even know about it. He's coming. And he is coming back again yes. to judge this whole world. Yes. So he talks on Wesley Chapel. Mm. Don't cry yes, sir. and don't grieve. Come on, yes. Because Jesus is coming back yes. to judge this world. Yes. I'm not saying that you're not going to have hard days because yes. you will. Yes. You will have hard days. You will have good days. But during the hard and the good days, yes, worship God. Yes. Worship yes. him in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. Trust him with all your heart, yes. soul, and mind. Yes. Lean on him. Don't lean on your understanding. Yes. But lean on him. Yes. Because he is worthy. Yes, and he will make a way for you. Yes, yes. So when you're going through your situation, and you say, God, why me? Yes. Why did you place me here? Yes. God placed you here. God placed you in this moment, in this sanctuary yes. for a reason. Yes. He placed you in an in, in uncomfortable situation yes. for a reason. Yes. So yes. you can get out of your comfort zone. Yes. Yes. So you can worship in him, yes. okay? Yes. God said, be holy, yes. for I am holy. Yes. Yes. 
Being holy is not just living right. right. Being holy is not just coming to church. Yeah. Right. Being holy is not just singing in the choir or speaking in tongues uh -huh. or praying hard. That's, that's not being holy. Being holy is being set apart. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Being set apart from this world. Yes. Being set apart from others. That's what being holy means because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is set apart from any other God that he is. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Good word. Jesus. God placed me here for a reason. Yes. What's the chapter? God placed you here for a reason. Yes. <clears throat> Do the will of the Father. Yes. Tell everyone about Jesus. Yes. yes. Don't be afraid to tell nobody. Amen. Yes. Tell your brothers. Amen. Tell your sisters. Yes. Tell yes. your mama. Tell your uncle. Tell everybody about Jesus. Yeah, and tell him that he is coming back to judge this world. Amen? Yeah, yeah. God's word for God's people. Amen. Yeah.